Good day to you. Today also the vision and the word of the Lord. Now we know yesterday, Lord gave us a vision and an understanding when a black shroud is pressing on a nation that he makes the tent of the righteous to light up. When the righteous catch the light, <clears throat> receive the light and increase in the light, the tent of the righteous arise and the dark shroud is pressed back just enough for a crack of dawn and we hope that will increase and increase. So we worked with this yesterday and we have taken up shields to be clad with this zeal and uh, I, I found when I woke up in the morning it was as if the Lord had been working through the night. Daytime we work and he still works in the night and some of us pray into the night, some of us wake up early morning in the night and then uh, as I woke up I felt as if I was hearing joy bells of a wedding a celebration. Then it came to me, it is as if Naomi and Ruth have returned to Bethlehem and Boaz has proposed to Ruth. Now that means there's bread in the house again, Bethlehem is thriving again, Boaz is kinsman redeemer to Ruth and Naomi is no more Mara but she has returned to be with Naomi and uh, the Lord has uh, provided a harvest and Boaz moved into it and our Boaz is our Lord Jesus Christ, our kinsman, redeemer, heavenly bridegroom that he will move into, move for a harvest working with the angels and the intercessors who prepare the way for the harvest, who see the light before others see the light, uh, who, who get the God thing. So it's a spirit of prophecy at a time when yesterday's deaths were 67, COVID deaths. So it, it's, a, it's, a bad, it's a distressing thing. But in it, God gives a prophecy and we know from Revelation 19.10, <clears throat> spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So if the Lord can find a remnant, those who follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goes, the Revelation 14.5 company, uh, the lamb follows on Mount Zion when he can find a Zion, when he can find a people to whom he can come, that he gives a prophecy what he sees as the possibility. So Philippians 2, uh, 14 describes the possibility and how God works with a possibility uh, when, there's a, when there are people who can take it and run, take it and work it out, thresh it out. Uh, Philippians 2, 14, uh, Philippians 2, 13, For it is God who is at work in you, in us, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So that God, both to will, the spirit of prophecy, the word of prophecy, is what he wills. And then the testimony of Jesus comes out of it because he will work for his good pleasure in each of us, if we agree to this, however bleak the situation is today with our uh, just plain hearing, when we see by faith, hear by faith, expect by faith, the spirit of prophecy brings in the testimony of Jesus. But there has to be a people who take up that word of testimony into their life and make it the testimony of their life living for Christ. This is how Nights turned to dawn in John Wesley's time, in London's darkest time, William Booth's time, and in our time, in COVID time, God still has a crack of dawn. God still has a way to lift up the tent of the righteous and lift up the shroud of darkness, death out of a nation and bring forth a sound of salvation. Uh, so he anoints our head with oil and he brings a gladness of his glad tidings of salvation and this is the oil of joy we have in the midst of ashes he brings forth beauty this is it so we go to the story of Ruth and Boaz and we know the beginning is very tragic Elimelech a well-placed man reasonably wealthy man wealthy enough to gather up everything go seek a future in another country but wrong place wrong time Moab he loses it all, he dies, his two sons die after marriage, Mahalon and Kilion. Elimelech meant, went, meant God is king, Naomi meant pleasant, but it all turned to Mara, bitterness, Naomi said. And then they hear news again, 
Then she arose with her daughters. Why? Because they heard she might return from the land of Moab, for she had heard, Ruth chapter 1 verse 6, she had heard in the land of Moab that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. There was a harvest in Bethlehem. Who worked for the harvest? Boaz worked for the harvest. With his servants, I have already defined who are these servants, the angels and the intercessors. And a harvest was ready. And the church was still in Moab. Uh, Naomi was still in Moab, far away. Death, dismal, dark, depression. But they heard a sound of salvation. They heard good news and they begin to return. And now Ruth returns. Opa goes away. Ruth returns. And then Naomi comes and says, Oh, don't call me Naomi. My, my life has been very bitter. But she gives the right advice to Ruth. And Ruth seeks Joaz's feet. And Joaz returns her his hand. That's, that's the threshing floor. So we have already done the threshing floor. Where the, the, where the harvest will be sifted. The chaff, out you go. And then comes the empty seed, out you go. And what little may remain in the harvest. So harvest is a trying time, testing time. What will remain? Sifting. Much Will much be out of your life? If you built with wood, hay and stubble on the foundation of Christ, very foolish that would be, that would be out. But what you built as silver, precious stone and gold, silver and precious stone, that remains even in the fire. So Ruth comes back and uh, she goes in the night to the threshing floor and uh, uh, Boaz recognizes her and says, I will be your kinsman redeemer. So it's a process and then it's worked out. The glad tidings in Bethlehem because the messianic line is re-established. Uh, Boaz has found a bride, Ruth. So we are no more the widow. We are, we, no more, we are no more people who are going before an unjust judge like the widow in Luke 18. Give me justice, give me justice from my adversary. No. We go to our Father in heaven with an expectation of a promise. Expectation of what he wills and what he desires in us. So heaven's intention meets with our desire and a new day is born. A man child is born. We learned it yesterday. Who will rule the nation with rod of iron. So daily we take this birth process that uh, what God's intention is born. God's scepter comes. We work with his shields and with his scepter and his staff provides for us. This is the mandate. Uh, so uh, Ruth is, uh, uh, Boaz becomes the kinsman redeemer who redeems Ruth and all that was lost. This is the time we are looking for the harvest God has prepared. So we see it in the spirit, harvest is plenteous. Through all these adversities, God is working for a harvest. But what does he need? He needs a prior harvest force who is seeing with him, agreeing with his spirit of prophecy and the testimony of Jesus to, be, to come out. Revelation 19.10, spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. This is where we are. And there was great joy in Bethlehem that Boaz found a wife who will keep the re redemption line. And this is how uh, the prophecies go. Uh, so the close astrology said, Then Boaz said to the elders, You are witnesses that today I have redeemed the inheritance of Naomi. All the people who were in the court and the elders, we are witnesses. May the Lord make your woman, make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, both of whom build the house of Israel. <clears throat> and may you achieve wealth in Ephrathah, and become famous in Bethlehem. This is God's prophecy for us also that the house of God will be built and new offspring will come as the harvest of God. And then we go to Isaiah 54 to capture this birth scene again. Babies coming, progeny coming. Isaiah 54. Take it as your scripture for today and encouragement. Isaiah 54. Shout for joy, O barren one who has borne no child. Break forth into joyful shouting and cry aloud, you who have not travailed. For the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtain of your dwelling. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your pegs. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left. Your descendants will 
possessed the nations and will resettle the desolate cities. Whatever the desolation, church will fill. Fear not, for you will now be put to you will not be put to shame. And do not feel humiliated, you will not be disgraced. But you will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood, you will remember no more. For your husband is your maker, whose name is the Lord of hosts, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, who is called the God of all the earth. For the Lord has called you, like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, even like a wife of one's youth when she is rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I forsook you, but with your great compassion I will gather you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. So the Lord will restore the fortunes of his people right in this time. We are strengthening our stakes, lengthening our cords, stretching out for the hope of God, the tent of the righteous, expanding and pushing back the shroud of darkness and shroud of dismal criticism. We are pushing back and the light of God will surely come. God bless you.